breaking the wall of microscopic motion. How atophysics captures fastest phenomena of the microcosm. Ferenc Krauss, Max Planck Society and Ludwig Maximilians Universität Munich. When the wall came down, I was in Vienna. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It uh, is a great honor for me to be here and allowed to tell you about breaking the walls of gaining access to the fastest motions uh, uh, in the microscopic world. You all know the proverb, seeing is believing. It uh, wonderfully expresses uh, the importance of vision. But have you ever asked yourself, how this capability actually comes about and how can it be possibly extended to observing fastest motions in the microscopic world. So in, the, uh, in my talk I'd like to show you uh, how um, uh, these, all these capabilities actually relate to a wonderful symbiosis between electrons and light. Well, for vision, uh, what we need in the first place is light. Uh, light emerges in nature from the electron's microscopic oscillatory motion. So if we zoom in now into this light bulb, the green clouds here uh, represent uh, the charge distribution of electrons in atoms oscillating around the core, uh, and the oscillation frequency determines the color of the emitted light. Once uh, this light reaches our eye, it impinges uh, on uh, the rhodopsin molecules in our retina uh, where uh, the light waves bring electrons into oscillation again. Uh, this electron oscillation uh, creates an electric signal which uh, is afterwards transferred, transmitted through our nerves, again by electrons, through our nerves to our brain where the image is formed. So the bottom line is, Electron motion is responsible for uh, both the emission and detection of light. Um, put it uh, the other way around from the perspective of light waves, uh, they originate from the electron's microscopic motion and can also induce this motion. So it's obvious that uh, uh, these uh, two motions, light waving and electron oscillations, are very, very closely connected. They um, are equally rapid, both evolving on an attosecond time scale. So now how brief are actually attoseconds? Uh, the most human unit of time is certainly second, which uh, uh, is the approximate duration of our heartbeat. One nanosecond is by a billion times shorter than one second and defines the characteristic scale for modern electronics. And one attosecond is by another billion times faster than uh, one nanosecond. Now how can we possibly capture motions that uh, take place on such a short time scale? I guess you all know the basic concept. Uh, uh, to rec recapitulate it for you, I would like to uh, uh, present a small, very, very primitive demonstration. So if I may have your help. Thank you. So uh, this uh, object um, representing a molecule uh, is moving, in this case actually rotating, so fast that our eye is unable to follow it. If we now illuminate uh, uh, this fast-moving object by short flashes of light, we can actually freeze the motion, as you see here. And if we time the light flashes properly, we can even realize a slow motion replay. So we may draw the conclusion that uh, access to uh, very fast motions requires short flashes of light. Now particles in the microscopic world move trillion to thousand trillion times faster than this dummy molecule, so we obviously need trillion to thousand trillion times 
faster, shorter pulses to capture them. This, thank you very much. <laughs> These uh, much shorter pulses can be produced by lasers uh, by uh, simultaneously generating light waves at many different colors and summing them. Uh, if we sum, if we add all uh, waves of visible light um, together, we can produce pulses that are as short as shown here, just three femtoseconds. However, even these pulses are far too long to capture the fastest uh, electrons that can, uh, that can uh, occur in nature. Um, this wave, this, 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 this white line, um, actually uh, shows us how the force that the electric field of this light wave exerts on charged particles like electrons actually varies in time. And it has been the control of this force that allowed us both the generation and measurement of attosecond pulses, which uh, uh, constitute the key to capturing um, electron motion in atoms. For this purpose, we focus uh, these few femtosecond pulses consist consisting of just one single wave period uh, with a controlled waveform into an ensemble of atoms um, which is kept in a small tube in a vacuum chamber. And if we now zoom in onto one atom, uh, we can follow how the charge distribution of the most weakly bound electron of this atom responds to the electric field of this light wave. Once uh, this field, once this light force becomes strong enough near the peak of the pulse, uh, the electron can be liberated from its atomic binding and uh, uh, first pulled away from the atom uh, by uh, uh, the strong force, but a uh, little later the force reverses its direction and pushes the electron back to the vicinity of the core where the re-encounter of the electron with its parent atom emits a short burst of extreme ultraviolet light. Now, you remember I mentioned at the beginning that uh, it is the, uh, it is the uh, uh, cooperation between, uh, between light and electrons that allow access to the microscopic world. Here you see what I meant by that. The light wave first sets the electron in motion. The electron uh, afterwards comes back, emits an even shorter light pulse, and as you will see in a few seconds, we use at the end these very short attosecond pulses for uh, actually following the motion of the electrons in real time. So that's how the, the circle is closed at the end. So uh, this process uh, that I've shown you here actually takes place uh, uh, simultaneously in, in, in millions of atoms, and that's how actually a microscopic, a, a, a microscopic uh, pulse with a microscopic intensity is set up. Uh, before we can set out to use them for capturing electron motion, we have to measure them, and that's what we devised uh, a new uh, concept, uh, uh, a new device uh, um, that we dubbed Light Field Driven Streak Camera 4. Uh, here you see the first result uh, that we obtained with this back in 2004, yielded, uh, which yielded uh, 250 at the second pulses. Uh, a little later, we could shorten these pulses down to 80 at the seconds, which constitute uh, the shortest uh, uh, events, isolated events uh, produced and measured to date. As a first application, we can use these at the second pulses to actually measure the waveform of light, of the light wave which we used previously for its generation. With these tools, with this few cycle laser wave and the attosecond pulse, we can now set out to uh, capturing electron motion uh, with a never before achieved resolution. Just as uh, the snapshots of a macroscopic object can be taken 
with a high-speed camera here with a microsecond exposure time. And from these snapshots, the motion can be reconstructed in slow motion replay to make it perceivable to, uh, to, our, uh, to our eyes. Uh, at the second pulses uh, allow, meanwhile, to take very similar uh, snapshots. If I manage to get to the next slide. OK. Uh, allowed to take very similar snapshots of electrons moving deep inside atoms, as you see uh, here from this series of pictures. Uh, again, from these snapshots, we can reconstruct the motion in slow motion replay. And uh, 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 for this purpose, we had to slow down time, or in the language of microscopy, we had to magnify time by a factor of 10 to the 15. You see, this is really a big number. Believe it or not, it's even bigger than the total debt of all uh, countries of the European Union in Euro. <laughs> Hard to believe, but it's true. So what is, uh, what is this good for? Well. Uh, you have uh, uh, seen uh, at the beginning of my talk uh, how electron motion in molecules is responsible for the detection of light and allows us uh, to see the world around us thanks to this motion and how this motion actually is able to transport biological information through our nerves to mention just two functions uh, two functions of, of, of vital importance for our life. Unfortunately, electron motion can also have fatal consequences, uh, particularly if this motion happens in a chemical bond, which actually glues atoms together to form molecules, which actually form our body. So if uh, electron motion is initiated in, in, in such a chemical bond, the structure of the molecule may change. It may cause a malfunction of this molecule of possibly vital biological function, which uh, at the end may result in the emergence of some uh, very serious disease like cancer. Developing uh, a broadband, efficient broadband therapies for diseases like cancer will rely on a deep insight into the microscopic origin of these diseases, I guess down to the lowest level, down to the level of electrons. But electrons are also responsible for, um, let's just go to the next slide. Electrons are also responsible OK, uh, for the um, revolution that we have witnessed uh, over the past decades in information technology. As you know, in present day electronics, uh, it's uh, basically microwave voltage that switches electric current on and off um, on a time scale of, uh, of nanoseconds. So one billionth of a second, which means that uh, the corresponding electric circuits are able to perform uh, operations uh, up to billions uh, per second. Now, at the second technology um, will hopefully sometime, maybe in 20 years in the future, allow us to replace microwaves with light waves in doing the same job, in switching current on and off in some uh, future version of, of electronics, like maybe molecular electronics or spintronics. This would mean that the potential would be open for speeding up information technologies by at least a factor of 100,000. Corresponding boost in computer power would definitely have uh, a number of implications. Um, I guess you could certainly conjecture uh, about many possible implications. Um, I guess uh, 
the reliable prediction of natural disasters uh, might be among the least spectacular ones. With these prospects, I would like to conclude my talk and uh, thank uh, the Max Planck Society, the European Research Council and the German uh, Science Foundation for the generous support, uh, my colleagues and co-workers, the team, uh, uh, the valuable contributions of whom made these results possible, uh, Christian Hackenberger and um, Woogieworks Animation Studio for the uh, graphics and animations, and last but not least, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.